This video is going to be about isomers. So to start out, let's look at what an isomer is. So an isomer is going to be two compounds that have the same elements and the same number of those elements, but they're going to be connected differently and give those two molecules different properties. So there are three kinds of isomers that we're going to look at today. So we're going to start with these ones. So these two molecules are going to have the same molecular formula, which will be C5H12, but the way that those molecules are connected to one another is going to be different. And so in these two, the structure of these molecules are different, so these are going to be structural isomers. So just to emphasize it again, these two molecules have the same number of atoms of the same elements, but they're connected differently, so these two molecules are going to have different chemical properties. So moving on to another kind of isomers, um, we're going to look at these two. So these are going to be geometric isomers. And so geometric isomers are going to be um, the same number of atoms of the same elements, but they're going to differ in their spatial arrangement within these two molecules. So typically geometric isomers arise because of the presence of a double bond, like you can see right here. And the reason that is, is because double bonds um, are not as flexible as single bonds. So these molecules can't really rotate and form different orientations because of that double bond. And so this one, this molecule is hardly ever going to be able to switch to form this molecule. And so that's why these two are different from one another, even though they have the same number of atoms of the same elements. But because they have that double bond and they can't switch easily, that's going to cause them to be geometric isomers. And so lastly, we're going to look at enantiomers. So enantiomers are kind of the trickiest isomer to work with. So an, an enantiomer is going to be two molecules that, again, have the same number of atoms of the same elements, but they're going to be non-superimposable mirror images of one another. So what that means is that um, imagine that this line right here is a mirror. So when this molecule looks in the mirror, this is the reflection that it sees right here. And so what makes these two enantiomers is when you get this reflection, we can't stack these two molecules on top of one another and have them line up perfectly. So a good way to visualize this is um, with your two hands. So your hands, they're mirror images of one another. And if you take your hands and you put them on top of each other, they don't line up perfectly. This way they line up perfectly, but when they're mirror images, they don't line up. And so that's the same thing that's happening with enantiomers. So just like these two molecules don't line up with one another when you put them on top of each other, we could also say that our hands are enantiomers of one another because when we stack them, they don't line up. And so these ones, like I said, are enantiomers. And they're a little trickier, so it's important to work with those a little more and be familiar with what they are um, and kind of what they look like and how to figure it out. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. Thank you.